Before I become a medical writer, I was on an informational interview with another writer and she said, in PhD, you don't even use Microsoft Word the right way. And you know what? She is right. So this video, I'd like to give you every secret about Microsoft Word. Well, just enough secret that it will be relevant to your PhD thesis and you will feel a lot more on top of the technical part of your writing document. And guess what? Maybe you'll become a medical writer in the future too, thanks to this video. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. This video is a thank you video also to my colleague Safras and Ravi, you are the best. We write clinical study reports, clinical study protocol, and all of the other regulatory writing document together. Medical writers are such wonderful people. I like to say a thank you to this mentor in my life who are more experienced than me and who are selfless and teaching me every trick they know. So I hope this video is going to inspire and continue the love to mentor younger PhD, younger medical writer. And maybe I can save some of you guys who are deciding to leave academia and don't know what is your marketable skill set. Because I think writing is really a hard to have, hard to earn technique. You can't easily find on the job market and we have plenty of us in PhD who need a job. Maybe we can connect. Anyway, I will switch to the another screen and show you my Microsoft Word trick. I took the effort to reconstruct a hypothetical manuscript. In this case, I copy and paste the HTML site and put it on Microsoft Word. And I'm going to quickly format the whole document to show you how I would have prepared it if I were writing your manuscript. It's going to use my holiday and do a little more writing. The first thing I would do is to make sure I take the effort to set up these default headlines and formatting of all these body tags headlines, subject line, and to use them repetitively. After highlighting the text, you can simply click the style that you want and it will become a headline or a main text. I hope you will give this a try, have that discipline of spending this extra 5 to 10 minutes and you will save yourself hours in the future. Did you know Microsoft font and headers can be controlled in a systematic way? If you change the paragraph and font setting under the header, you can change the whole document consistently in a fill button. If you have 200 pages of document, you're saving time from having to manually do all this adjustment. You can just do one click. Just an example, when I adjust the body of the text, if I don't want it to be left aligned and I want everything to be justified, meaning they are distributed throughout the width of the page. Because I have set everyone as a body text, I can change this setting under style and you see, voila, the whole document now justified instead of left aligned. I know these are really nerdy tricks, but save you a ton of time if you have 200 pages. Counting down second one, I found it very hard to follow when a figure is not next to the text. The problem can be solved by opening another viewing window of Microsoft Word. And the whole time, six years in postdoc, four years in PhD, I have never considered that icon. And you can actually open side by side two viewing window of the same document. So is that two spaces or one between these two words? It's hard to know when you just look at it with bare eye, but if you turn on paragraph mark, you can now see every empty space, paragraphs, and redundant new lines that were added to your document. Then you can format everything carefully and precisely. There's a lot of formatting requirement in my sector for regulatory document. We all know about the little paintbrush that you can paint on the formatting from one line to the other. But did you know if you hold down Control Shift C and Control Shift V, you can copy and paste a formatting that you had from another document to the next one. Most probably PhD student knows about inserting a comment, tracking changes, sending the track changes, and the cycle continue. And before you know it, you don't even remember where are the changes and there are a lot of mismatch between document. It's a nightmare. So 
this is a shout out to Ravi. He taught me how to compare document using the review button. Until now, I've never seen this button called review compare. Under review, you can compare two documents and you can have the one that you have nicely formatted, you are keeping ownership of it. And when your PI, your collaborator add comment, you can now accept all the changes from that comment and then compare the two version. And by computer comparison, you are only incorporating all the word changes instead of formatting changes. So when someone accidentally changed your row height or paragraph setting, you can now ignore all of these and focus on only the scientific input. And lastly, as a writer, I also use Excel to create all my table before I place them in Microsoft Word. I saw this meme on Twitter the other day. It talks about how when you change a table in Microsoft Word, the whole formatting is off. The secret is, <laughs> I think Microsoft Word is not the best tool for formatting and adjusting table. So my little secret of being a medical writer is I always make sure I design my table using an Excel sheet and then I paste it to Microsoft Word and then I distribute the rows by this button by the width of the document. Now, voila, everything will look professional. You're saving a ton of time not wrestling with Microsoft Word on table. And Microsoft Word, I hope you do better with making tables because I think Microsoft Word is not the best about this feature. So there are many tutorials on YouTube that teach you how to do this. So I'm not going into the detail, but I want to highlight it's a very helpful feature that you should look into is to create headers or figures and table using Microsoft heading. And you can also link them in text when you are citing a table list of table, list of figures and headers can be automatically updated on your content page. So I'm not going to show you all the details because I'm sure there are tons of videos out there. But I just want to bring it here that you need to look into that if you're creating your thesis. And when you insert a table, after you edit a new table on table three, you have five other tables that needs to be renamed. You don't have to manually go back to your content page and change page number of where the table is. You can avoid the situation now by using this feature on Microsoft Word. So if you learned something from today's video, make sure to hit the like button and share this with anyone that you're working with who are struggling with Microsoft Word. So I hope this saves you some time and make sure to Google all of this later. I hope this is going to help you streamline your document preparation experience. And even you're not a professional writer in PhD, a thesis is probably the most complex writing you get to. So I hope this video will help you and good luck with all your document preparation and have fun on Microsoft Word. And I hope this is going to help you feel more on top of it. If you like my sharing continuously after PhD and postdoc, make sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure to like this video so that more people can see the same tip. And if you're a PI and you're too busy showing all of these tricks to your students, my resources is made friendly to all stages of PhD students. So just share my video and voila, save you hour of time. You're welcome. And thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.